What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Hey, the last video I did got a lot of people thinking, a lot of people messaging me, a lot of people want to get more clarification on where my thoughts, my opinions, and where my thought process is going. So this is part two to is it fair, uh, basically setting expectations of others. And I do want to give us scenarios, uh, many people have messaged me asking me, um, what scenarios are you talking about and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Part two, is it fair, basic expectations of other people, all right? Um, I'm gonna throw it out there. Great response, thank you so much for the love and, and, and passing this video forward or passing the last video forward. Um, but let's jump into it. So a lot of people were asking me about, okay, setting expectations, especially in dating or relationships and putting things up in the forefront. It's so basically what I'm saying majority of the time here when I say you set expectations. A lot of people have expectations in the back of their head. They never bring it forward. They never um, state it from the, from the get-go. And I think there's a big difference when it comes to expectations and standards. All right, let's say dating. You have your standards and you have, you know, the things that you're looking forward for uh, your mate to be able to, uh, to bring forth to the table, to, to make you feel attracted to them, to make you feel as though you can be with them, uh, safe with them, secure with them, stuff like that. I just don't believe, let's say for instance, that you have this expectation of your significant, or, or the person you're dating, that they need to be a certain way. And now what happens when they don't reach that expectation? All right, then that throws you into a loop and then you have to decide to stay with the person or not, right? But remember, this is your expectation you're putting on someone that you're dating, someone that you will choose to be in a relationship or not, okay? Now, let's say if you had a conversation and you just, like, like I said, this is just dating, you're getting to know each other, you're not officially boyfriend, girlfriend or whatnot, um, but you're, you're setting down your standards. You know, these are the things I look forward to um, in, in a mate. I believe those are standards. When you say the word expectation, it almost borderline means that you're expecting it to come to you. There's like a bad connotation. To be honest with you, I don't like the word expectation. And, and, and so when you're dating and you set out these expectations, these lofty, you know, you expect the person to be nice and you expect them to treat you with respect. No, you hope because that's the standard that you want to approach because that's who you are, but you hope the, peop the, the person that you meet, the person that you date, um, meet those standards, but you can't expect it because what happens if they don't, right? That, it goes back to that. Then you gotta go ahead and say, okay, you know, you're not, not my cup of tea, friend zone, whatever, you know, put them in the friend zone or whatnot. Let me see, let me throw you another, another example. For instance, my dad and I, right? Could he have expected me to be a different person? Could he have expected me to be uh, a doctor, a lawyer, an attorney, an engineer, uh, whatever, a dentist, whatever? Did he have those expectations? Probably, to be honest. Now let me flip that around. Did I expect my dad to be the perfect dad? He had to be the man I look up to in every single aspect of life. Now those are high lofty, lofty expectations. It's basically setting me up for failure because if my dad doesn't reach these expectations of who a father should be, a father figure, a male figure, whatever, a role model, then damn, I look at him in a different way. That's not fair. That's not fair to expect my dad to be perfect. Well, we all know damn well, none of us are perfect, all right? So I have to embrace, I have to show grace, I have to show forgiveness um, if my dad falls short because I'm gonna fall short as a son. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dentist. Uh, no, I work with foster youth and probation youth basically as a life coach. That's way different, right? And you just gotta accept and embrace that and that's what they did with me, my mom and dad, um, even though they don't understand why I do the things I do, whatever. Let me throw you another, another scenario. Let's say at, at work, all right? I used to have this conversation with my supervisor, my old supervisor for my old job, that if there are expectations of me to be this type of worker, right? I understand if we have a conversation and you're telling me like, hey, these are the standards I need you to meet. I need you to hit this, 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 and this, right? If I, can she expect me to be perfect at all those things? I hope not. 
But if I hit majority of those and I show that I'm still a great worker and I can communicate that, the damn, hopefully, you know, I reached some sort of standard of what she saw me as an employee. But here's the flip side of it. You're my boss. Should I have expectations of you leading the way? Should I have expectations that you're going to converse with me, communicate with me the needs that you need me to meet? You know, should I also give you feedback? Should you be expecting feedback from me as someone that looks up to you or, you know, you're my superior? Are you open to that? You know, are you open to that expectation? Because I don't think that's, like I said, I don't think that's fair. But if we have a, a conversation, communication of, hey, these are our goals. These are our standards. Let's hit these. And let's, let's go out and do it. And then we constantly communicate on, hey, how can, how can you be a better uh, boss for me? And how can I be a better um, worker for you? You know, and, and just keep that evolving. But there's no expectations because I'm not expecting her to be perfect. You understand what I'm saying now? Let me throw you another one. For all those, I have a lot of people. Uh, you guys, are, I'm Catholic Christian, um, so this is going to be a faith-based uh, metaphor or faith-based uh, example. So for all you guys that are kind of like, eh, just listen. All right? I believe that the good Lord doesn't expect us to be perfect. And remember, for all those who are faith-based, your relationship is your relationship with the Lord above. Right? Is it perfect? No. Um, would he want us to be, does he expect us to be perfect? No. So if that's the fact, that he doesn't have expectations, but he hopes and he prays that we follow and we are good servants and, and we are uh, vessels for him to work through, he knows that we're going to fall short. So he doesn't expect us to be perfect, all right? And, and, and if, if that was the case, we're set up for failure, all right? Like, I know every single day I'm sinning, no matter if it's my thoughts, my reaction, my, you know, the, the, the way I, I, I may decide to do certain things. I, I'm, I fail every single day, you know? But I know with forgiveness and grace, he's not expecting me to be perfect, so let me wrap this up. The word expectation, I think we just need to go away with it. You can't expect someone to be a certain way. Only they can choose to expect that out of themselves. If you're dating someone and you expect them to be perfect, you expect them to give you words of affirmation, what happens if they're not capable of doing it? That's not their way of communicating. What happens if you want words of affirmation, but they do it through action? Instead, you expect words, they don't provide that. Now you're, you're caught. Other people probably look at you crazy like, dude, look at him or her. She constantly, he constantly does things for you. Can't you appreciate that? No, no, no. I need them to give stroke my back and tell me more that they love me, that they care for me, that I'm beautiful, that I'm the one thing in their life, blah, 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 blah. But you got to understand, your expectations are your expectations. Only have it for yourself. Now, if you want standards, you know, for those who are entering your life and stuff like that, cool, have those standards. Just make sure, you know, you go ahead and decipher who you want to keep and who you don't want to keep. But you're not expecting people to be a certain way. We all know this already that, that you know, everybody's different. Everybody was blessed with their own personality. Everybody's blessed with their own body type. Everybody's blessed with, with just so many things to offer. But if you constantly expect certain things to happen, certain things where people should be, like they should this, should be like that, should, shame on you. Because then you're not, you're not showing any grace, you're not showing any forgiveness, you're not showing that you're willing to open just love for everybody's differences. And let's start with that. Personally, I love the fact that we have this dialogue, it's open, and we constantly just strive to be better. But understand where I'm going with this is that I honestly truly believe that the only expectation you should have is with yourself because that's all you can control is what you do, how you react, what you say, how you're going to do things. But you don't have control, so therefore you don't have expectation towards others to meet what you think is right.
Because what you may deem is right may not be what they think is right. And then now you're stuck. And you got to figure out, are they really that bad of a person just because they don't meet what you expect, that you're going to cut them out of your life? Or do you, or you actually learn to understand who they are and embrace and accept them? Let me know what you think. Comment below. And I remember one of the posts someone saying about expectation of parents and stuff like that. Yeah, parents. I'm going to throw this out there also. I'm not a parent, so I don't know. But as a kid growing up, having all these lofty ex expectations, I never knew that I was supposed to meet some kind of criteria and be a certain son and all this stuff. And therefore, I kept failing and failing and I was just fighting. I was fighting so much to prove to prove that I'm a good kid, to prove that I'm smart, to prove that whatever I set my mind to, that you know I'm, I'm going to be okay. But it wasn't along the path of what my parents wanted. And that was like a fight. And then now as I'm older, I realize something. You're going to have to accept and embrace whatever your son or daughter may want to do because that's their passion. And how much more can you be proud that they're chasing their dreams and what they feel as though is what they themselves need to do on this earth anyways that was a tangent i need to go off on so please understand where i'm coming from keep the dialogue coming i love the fact that it's going back and forth and, and we're just enjoying conversation nobody is, is is busting each other's bubbles it's all respectful love the fact that you know we can agree to disagree disagree to agree whatever it's just beautiful to see that this community is just that open and just that lovely and let's continue this, this ride, this journey together. All right, remember, 5,000 um, by the end of the year. That's the goal. Let's keep it pumping. All right, until next time, thank you so much. I love you all. All right, take care. Cheers. Be blessed.